read this because I actually wrote this the other day. I don't want to fuck it up. I'm using my notes. I just might need reading glasses. I hit 43 and all of a sudden I needed reading glasses. Anyone else? I'd like to introduce you to the real star of the show. <laughs> I drank enough bourbon so I wouldn't cry. <laughs> yes, I realize that Bayer Webb and Poppy Chamblin are in the house, but my favorite funny lady has never hit the comedy stage before. Today she will make her debut performance without any prior experience. So go light on her. And for good reason. Life is fucking short. And she knows that truth all too well. Nearly a year ago, my dear friend Jeanette Oakland found out that she had cancer in her brain. She was only given a few weeks to live. Fortunately, due to the advocacy of Robin and Tracy, the Libby's Legacy Breast Cancer Foundation, an incredible mindset, brilliant doctors, and a dark and twisted sense of humor, which is why we're here. <laughs> Jeanette is still here to talk about her fight. And tonight, she will make one of her bucket list items come true. And I am honored to provide that space for it. To do a stand-up comedy show so she can make fun of death. Jeanette has literally been dying to make you laugh. Without further ado, please welcome to the stage one of my dear friends, Jeanette Parker. provided stock options for <laughs> an upgrade. And it's not even fair to say these are an upgrade. It could be a downgrade. It just, if, you're, if you're into perkiness, it was an upgrade. If you're into size, it was a downgrade. <laughs> Who here knew me before I lost them? <laughs> My high school folks are new people. They were huge. They were a little ridiculous on my five foot one and a half inch frame. Um, but they were so big that when they left, they got their own obituary <laughs> and their own memorial service. I'm serious, some of you guys were here for that, right? <laughs> So, you know, cancer right now is so prolific. Not only one in eight women get breast cancer, but one out of two of us will deal with a cancer ourselves. That's wild. Google it, I didn't believe it, but Google knew. And, you know, one out of two people, that's 50%. That's like the divorce rate. <laughs> Which means 
you know where I fell on that equation. Mm -hmm. So the safest place to be is right next to me, guys. I'll take oh, it for the team. <laughs> It's becoming competitive. <laughs> I just can't go around flashing a cancer card anymore when I need a favor or to get to the front of the line. Because <laughs> they're like, big deal. I got, I got skin cancer. So, <laughs> now what we have to do is we have to rank it for prioritization. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to issue everybody the American Express card. <laughs> You get stage one cancer, we're gonna give you that green card. <laughs> you know, it's still an American Express, an entry level. You show up with stage two, we're gonna give you that blue card with member benefits. <laughs> stage three, you're gonna get that gold card you start flashing around. Stage four, platinum. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So anyways, um, you know, pretty serious news. Thank you. And so within a couple days, they rushed me off to the neuro-oncologist. Now that's a neurologist who's also an oncologist. That's a smart guy. Yeah. And we take, Linda and I go, we take Robin with us as our patient advocate. And we get into the waiting room and there's some very sick people there, right? All kinds of things going on. In a typical fashion, we're being just a little irreverent. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> it's, it's dark humor, it's inappropriate you know, conversations, <laughs> offending everybody around us. <laughs> and so then we you know, get to the back and you have to see the nurse and the fellow and the doctor and they're all gonna ask you the same questions over and over again. So the nurse does her intake and she says, now I see you've had breast cancer in 2013. Where is it now? <laughs> I'm assuming it's one of those little red bags with a biohazard stick on it. <laughs> And this leptomeningeal disease that I have will man manifest itself neurologically. Could look like a stroke for me. One day I show up at the house, I just piss my pants, I don't know what's going to happen. Or it could look like ALS. It's, it, it gets really ugly. So he wants to examine me to, for my neurological status. And it's nothing more than a freaking DUI test. <laughs> I did. I had to stand on one leg. I had to close my eyes. I had to do this number. And I did fine. And then he asked me, say the alphabet backwards. Oh. Nobody can do that. I can't do that on a good day. I got through it. Determined. I'm, and I'm, I'm so convinced now that there has been people charged with DUI that didn't really need it. They didn't put it in. <laughs> so by the end of that exam, what we came out with was a huge sense of urgency. All right, this cancer is like eating your brain. We gotta move fast. We gotta find out what's going. We're gonna get you another stat MRI. We're gonna get one in your spine. And we're gonna get you a lumbar puncture. Go out and see the ladies at the desk. <laughs> we go see the ladies at the desk. This very serious woman is at the desk. And what she says is, checking out. But then she offered me my stat MRI and test in nine weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and unless he's ordering like a post-mortem study, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> so um, apparently I'm babbling too long because you're pulling me off the stage. No. It was up on the businesses. They had me moving, you know, going on daisy walks. They planted an oak tree for me. The news came in and everything about this poor dying woman that's going to be dead in three months. <laughs> <laughs> it was so touching. And all of a sudden, I was in Macy's front window. Everybody was watching every move I made. <laughs> so then, about June, I'm getting some kind of suspicious eye, side eye. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Meaning, I'm still chubby. 
chubby and I'm not yellow. <laughs> and now wait, I feel guilty, so I started apologizing to you. <laughs> Oh my God, it was horrible. I've never been so sick in my life. It was like, Lucifer himself crawled up my ass. <laughs> and ripped his little pitchfork up and down so thin in my colon. And started packing it with brimstone and fire. And then it would shoot out 14 times a day at a velocity that I would not ever understand. <laughs> So my wife Linda, by the way, if there is ever a zombie invasion or an apocalypse, call my wife.
Oh, shit. 